Um, this, as you can obviously see, is not a tech video, um, uh, it's not a book video, uh, but it's a baking video and I, I haven't done one of these for a little while. Uh, but obviously we're still in lockdown, although that is uh, easing a little bit now. Um, but during lockdown I found a lot of uh, pleasure and relaxation in baking. Um, my speciality is bread. I do cakes and buns and various other things. Um, but uh, I do like to bake a loaf, the kneading part of it um, and, and the proving part and above all the smell. Now one of the things that has been difficult to get during the lockdown period from baker shops um, or supermarkets is pita bread. Plenty of naan bread, plenty of loaves and everything else, but pita bread has been difficult to find. And uh, I like to have a piece of pita bread, open it up and uh, stuff it with hummus or salad or something else like that. And my daughter and my grandchildren love to do that as well. So the other day uh, she said to me, can you make us some pita bread? So I thought, yeah, I can do that. Um, and so I'd like to share my pita bread uh, creation with you. Now before I start, there's a couple of interesting items that I've got which are uh, invaluable. The first one I bought off eBay and it's this timer. I'll give you a close-up in a minute. Uh, it's this double timer and um, it has uh, the ability to time two areas at once um, and uh, it's, uh, it, it's very, very good, so you can have two sets of things going. So if you're proving, you can time that, and if you're waiting for something else to, to finish, you can, you can do that as well. So that's the first item. The second item is my trusted and somewhat flowery uh, digital thermometer. Uh, that is always um, very useful. And my last item I'm going to show you just now. Uh, it's, um, it's actually a mat for um, a heating mat, a heating mat for seedlings. And uh, I just find it really, really useful. It's, it's here, I'll give you a close-up in a minute. Um, it's a really useful device uh, for proving your dough. It gives a constant temperature and it makes it go that just that little bit faster uh, without overproving it. So without more ado, um, let's get on and, and do this, this job. Um, you may wonder why it's been a little gap. Well, I've had a, uh, a bit of a hiccup with health um, recently, but pleased to say that all my tests were positive. Sorry, that's the wrong thing to say. All my tests were negative and uh, I'm completely have a, a fine bill of health now, so not a, a real issue with that anymore. But it was a bit of an anxious time. You all know what it's like when you're waiting for medical results. Anyway, enough of that. Um, and let's get on and make this pita bread. To get good results, you also need a pair of scales. Maybe not these, uh, but a good set of digital scales um, is invaluable to getting your, your correct weights. I also have invested in this small digital scale, which measures 0.1 of a gram up to 200 grams, and they're really useful. So. The first thing we need to do is decide what yeast we're going to use. Um, now you can obviously use the, uh, the quick yeast, easy bake quick yeast, it's very simple to use, it's just put it into the bake. Um, you can also get uh, this type of quick yeast um, and use that, but I prefer to use fresh yeast and this is some fresh yeast here. Um, it only lasts for about a week so you really need to buy small quantities of it if you can find the source and uh, use it quite quickly but it does give really really good results um, so I'm going to first of all activate this yeast uh, and that takes about 10 minutes so we'll get um, we'll get the yeast activated and then we can actually start measuring out the flour and the other components we're going to need to make pita bread so if you're using fresh yeast you need to activate it um, and it, the quantity is also quite important so I'm going to if you're using the, um, you know, the instant yeast, easy yeast, you need about 7 grams. I'm going to use fresh yeast and you need to uh, more or less double that. So I'm going to do about 14 grams. Oh, that's far too much. I didn't zero it, did I? Stupid boy. Let's do that and uh, tar it. That's right. 
Now I'm going to put on about um, 14 grams of fresh yeast. Just a little bit more. I don't mind if I go just a little bit over that. 17 grams. That should be absolutely fine. Uh, I'm now going to put that in the uh, in the mixing bowl to start it. And then it needs to be broken up fairly small. Then I'm going to add um, two teaspoonfuls of sugar to it to give it a bit more zest. And then I'm going to add, um, it doesn't really matter the quantity, but not too much uh, of lukewarm water um, to get it started. So just add lukewarm water to it. That's water you can put your um, finger in without it hurting, just like that. That's probably enough. And you subtract this uh, amount of liquid from the total amount of liquid that you're going to be actually using in your mix. So what I do is just put in a, a measuring drill, uh, and if it comes to say, I don't know, um, if it comes to say 50, uh, 150 grams, then I just add the rest to make it up to the fluid required. So mix that well. One thing with baking is there's no need to hurry. It's a very relaxing thing to do. And I'm going to cover that now with a saucer and wait for about 10 minutes. And when we come back, the top of that should be um, showing lots of bubbles and activity. For this uh, pita bread recipe, I like to use a mixture of uh, wholemeal flour and also strong white bread flour. So I use 250 grams of each, making 500 grams altogether. So let's do the, um, the white flour first. So first of all I'm adding 250 grams of strong white bread flour and then after that I'm going to mix it with 250 grams of wholemeal flour and uh, giving us the, um, the 500 gram quantity that we need to make the pita bread. This recipe makes uh, eight pita breads so um, quite a nice quantity really and to that I need to add um, some sea salt uh, about um, Oh, one teaspoonful of sea salt will probably be enough, just a heap teaspoonful, and that's it. It's all ready to mix around and um, to go into the mixer. I've now um, added the activated yeast to my uh, measuring measuring jug, and now we're going to top that up with tepid water to um, to the amount required. Um, so it's 300 grams and uh, once that's there then it's ready to add to the flour mix. So I'll start the mixer and this is going to be noisy and I'm going to mix this for four minutes on a slow speed. I'm just going to add the liquid in. So that's been mixing for four minutes on a slow speed. I'm now going to flour my work surface uh, lightly flour it and turn the dough out of that. If you were doing this wholly by hand, you'd need to uh, knead it for about 15 minutes. But I'm just going to turn this out now onto my um, onto my work surface and uh, then knead it for just a few minutes until the dough is smooth and and uh, and elastic. So I'm just going to do that now. And uh, this is my preferred method of kneading. Fold it in. Need and pull. Need and pull. I think that's looking quite good now. So it's got a nice smooth uh, surface on it. So what I'm going to do now is make that into a ball by pulling inwards all the time and folding it in underneath. And it shouldn't break up on the top. It should stay reasonably, but it should stay nice like a, a lovely smooth ball. So keep doing that. Don't be afraid of it. It's a living thing now, and it's almost ready, or it is ready for its first proof. Now to do that, I'm going to get my mixing bowl again, and I'm going to get some more olive oil, and just put a tiny tad of olive oil in. Rub that around nicely, 
the bowl. Just give this a quick finish like this, just to move it in. That's lovely. And now I'm going to put it in the bowl like that. And now I'm going to let that prove for about an hour. Um, and before I do that, I'm obviously going to uh, um, put some cling film on the top of it um, and to stop the crust forming too, too rigidly. While I was getting everything ready for the pita bread, I thought it might be a good idea to start an ordinary white bread um, prove as well. So I've mixed 700 grams of strong white bread flour and you can see it proving next to the uh, next to the pita, pita bread mix. So I'm now going to leave that for about an hour or an hour and a half or until both have at least doubled in size before I carry on. Moving on a bit in time, that's about an hour and a half. My um, ordinary loaf is proved really well and that's ready to go into to cook now. Um, the pita bread is almost ready to divide up and to prove for a second time. Uh, but because it's uh, whole, gr whole grain uh, flour, it does take a little bit longer to, to actually prove. But it's nearly there, so I think what I'll do first is bake the, um, bake the white loaf, and uh, then once that, that only takes half an hour, once that's done, um, the, uh, the pit of bread will be ready to uh, prove. It's got to have another 20 minutes and then be divided up uh, and made into the right shape. So um, that's where we are at the moment. Right, the uh, white loaf that um, I was doing in between doing the pit of bread is now uh, risen on its second prove and it's ready to go into the oven which I've preheated uh, to gas mark 7 in other words very very hot. Uh, before I do that I'm going to spray the oven um, just to make sure that uh, there's a nice lot of steam in there to form a bit of a crust on this bread. The next step is to roll the dough out into a long sausage and then divide it up into eight pieces uh, before we make the, um, the balls to reprove um, for 20 minutes. And then we're going to uh, roll out the dough into the classic pita bread shape. So um, it's a little bit longer yet to wait before we're ready to put this stuff in the oven. Once you approve the balls for a further 20 minutes under a tea towel, you then need to roll them out. I use semolina flour uh, on the, the surface to stop them sticking. Um, and roll them out into the classic pita bread oval shape. You then need to cover them again with a tea towel and wait a further half an hour. So all this is taking quite a lot of time. Um, further half an hour uh, before they've risen enough to actually put them in to a very, very hot oven on a baking tray. It's important when you put them in the oven not to put too many in because they will merge. Um, I usually do four at a time. Um, and they need to be in the oven on a very hot baking tray for about 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes. Uh, mine actually usually take between seven and eight minutes. But you have to watch them all the time. And as soon as they start going brown, um, you need to take them out. You don't want them too dark brown because they, they won't taste good. Um, and uh, watching them, and they rise very, very quickly. Once they've risen, um, after about eight minutes, then you can take them out and put the next batch in. Well, after seven minutes, they are very, very raised and almost time to come out. You just want them to look slightly brownish, but you certainly don't want to go past that uh, because they need to be split open and they will taste delicious. So, almost ready to take out. Well, there you are. After seven hours, um, uh, it's complete. There's the pita breads, um, all eight of them, and my loaf, which I made in tandem. So that accounted for another seven hours of lockdown. Very relaxing and uh, very rewarding. And if this was smell vision, you would love the smell in this kitchen just now. Well, that's it for this video. Some delicious pita breads, um, all ready to be cooled and then cut and filled with whatever you want to have in them. And, uh, my um, my white loaf, which uh, I'm really quite pleased with. So that's all done. Um, well, that's filled another 
seven hours of lockdown and uh, it's been very relaxing and very rewarding. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, um, it just takes your mind off everything else doesn't it? If you can actually get involved and do something. And now I'm sure my daughter is going to enjoy this and, and the bread. Um, I'm not eating very much bread at the moment because uh, I could have watched my carbohydrates. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hope it's not gone on too long and I'll be back with you again soon. Um, I'm feeling quite relaxed. I hope you are. Until next time, I'm going to say goodbye. But as always, take care.